Hello guys, uh, welcome back. Today I would like to talk about uh, RabbitMQ and I'll show you an example where uh, I put fast API uh, on top of RabbitMQ and allow uh, access uh, from the, from through API from the web. Uh, so you would be able uh, to push a message uh, into RabbitMQ queue from the web um, API call and this message would uh, travel to to the receiver. Um, some action would be done on the receiver, and message will be returned back. So RabbitMQ is um, excellent and reliable Postman that uh, allows you to implement communication between services. And let's see how you could put fast API on top of that, so that you would have a web endpoint uh, to trigger the communication. And we are going to use uh, RPC remote procedure call uh, in, in for, to implement the communication in RabbitMQ. Let's go to my screen. And uh, first of all, uh, I pick up uh, existing sample from uh, RabbitMQ documentation, sample number six, which explains uh, how to build um, uh, remote procedure call communication between two services. And on top of that code, I implemented uh, fast API router and uh, exposed this uh, uh, API uh, to be available uh, on the web, basically, right? And the source code I'll put uh, URL below the video is available in my sample apps directory. And uh, it's sample number 10, which is called Rabbit, RabbitMQ RPC with fast API. Okay, so let's not waste any time and let's let's go to the source code. So let's uh, see how sample application is structured. So first is the endpoint uh, Python script, which acts uh, like a main entry point to the application. When you run the application, this will be a uh, fast API endpoint. And over here we define um, URL, uh, which, um, um, Proof. Uh, using that URL, API will be available right over here. And we define some uh, additional properties uh, for course. And then uh, there are multiple ways how you could um, uh, define API with fast API. And it's, uh, it's actually straightforward. I prefer to uh, define a router to use separate file, a separate script where uh, API structure will be defined. So this is uh, API is defined in, inside API router. And over here we actually have two uh, methods exposed get, uh, which is a dummy method, which helps to test if API is up and running. And the second one is uh, calculate Fibonacci number because original RabbitMQ sample calculates Fibonacci number and I'm building functionality on top of that. So I'm using the same, the same method. So in this method, uh, it's a post method because we, have, we pass parameter. We want uh, our function to accept the parameter of Fibonacci number. Then we in initialize um, uh, Fibonacci RPC client class, which uh, comes from this package. And then on top of that class, uh, there is a method, uh, call method from, from that class, and we, we invoke this method, right? Then we get the result and return the result back to the client. So the interesting part here is um, uh, this this Fibonacci uh, RPC client class. So let's this is implemented inside here RPC client. And by the way, this one small thing API models. Uh, it's um, a script where we have a helper class uh, which is using Pydantic uh, in order to define. Um, uh, the type for our for the input which will come to the fast API endpoint. So uh, uh, it's being used over here. Uh, it, it, it defines that uh, the input will be of type uh, data and data uh, type contains one element, a Fibonacci number. Right? And this is how we get the input value from input data. We get uh, we get the, the Fibonacci number because it's being assigned to the to this uh, type, which is being mapped with um, endpoint uh, post method. Okay, so using RPC client, and this is the RPC client, and it's actually the code from uh, RabbitMQ, uh, right? So this is the client which sends the message. 
and then there's a server which uh, gets gets the message doing invokes the callback doing processing and returns back the value you can read about uh, client and server through on rabbitmq website i'll not go into that uh, to make sure that i don't add any extra complexity to this video so my 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 point is to have it as simple as possible so the the whole point is that uh, uh, we are able to reuse um, RabbitMQ sample in a very, very simple way. It just uh, we import the class from the package and using this um, class and method from that class inside the endpoint, which we defined with fast API to be called through for, for the API, right? Calculate Fibonacci method. And okay, let's start. Um, let's go to the uh, GitHub directory, and I have I have listed commands here, uh, which would help you to run the application on your environment. So first, we need to start um, RPC server, right? And let's go into uh, our application, and let's go to API and. I can try it. So this is where the script is located. We started, and we st uh, in this way we started um, the basically backend server. And in this case, we have all the code in the same application. But in practice, you could um, have it running in separate microservices, for example. So the server uh, it doesn't need to, to stay in the same application with the client. So obviously, it can be anywhere else uh, running inside separate Docker, con Docker container as a microservice. And the beauty of um, RabbitMQ communication is that you could use the same uh, server uh, and start multiple instances. And those instances can run on different containers and different environments and so on. So if you want to scale your application to add more, uh, to, to improve performance, for example, you could, you could scale it by starting more uh, backend instances. And uh, when the message would be coming would come from RabbitMQ. It could do round robin load balancing, so it can it can assign um, uh, messages to different instances and run. Uh, and this would help to distribute processing and uh, remove the load from one node to another, from one instance to another. And to demonstrate that, I I'm, I'm, I'll start uh, I'll start uh, multiple. Uh, instances for the backend, right? And let's go to okay, to the second two instances have started, and now let's start the let's start the endpoint, and uh, we're using Uvicorn. And with uh, Unicorn, we start fast API application, right? So let's start it. Application is uh, initialized, and then we can go to uh, to the browser and initiate. Uh, we can we can start some um, rest request, some request to, to 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 see how it works. And uh, let's see first if API is running. We get the response, it's fine, and now let's start the POST method. So let's assume we want to calculate Fibonacci number for number 100. All right, and here let's call execute, and then we get the response. We see that a request uh, arrived to uh, fast API uh, server. Uh, we have some print lines over there. And then if we switch to uh, second tab, uh, we see that this um, request was processed by the first um, instance uh, in the backend. So this means RabbitMQ uh, was able to track there are two instances of uh, the subscriber or server are running, and the first one was assigned for processing. And when we do the second uh, call, it can be the same Fibonacci number or it can be different, doesn't matter. Let's put 50. We execute, we get the results, and we see that this request was processed by the second instance. So it runs in a round robin. And uh, when you have 
multiple requests coming at the same time, they'll be assigned to different instances. The way this way, this is the way how it works. And yeah, I think this is uh, very pow uh, powerful um, uh, for especially for microservices because you can have, um, um, let's say, uh, API interface, uh, and through that API interface, you could uh, um, uh, get uh, get calls from the outside, and then uh, you can initiate. Um, uh, message and send it to RabbitMQ queue, and uh, this message will be assigned uh, to the to the subscriber automatically based on the round robin um, uh, functionality, right? Uh, based on the round robin method, and um, uh, then the subscriber would do the processing and return back the response. And you always you know you have a key uh, of the. When you get the response, you would uh, you would be able to identify uh, the original request uh, by by the key and return it, return it back correct answer. And yeah, this uh, we are building microservice uh, products ourselves, and we find that RabbitMQ is a great platform uh, to enable communication between microservices because you don't have tight coupling. And uh, you use uh, RabbitMQ as a postman to transfer messages from one uh, microservice to another, uh, do processing, get back results, and uh, things like that. And hopefully this quick hint was useful uh, for someone who is looking how to put um, API on top of RabbitMQ for web applications. And um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, till the next time. Bye.